All right, this is very serious. All right, it's getting more serious. And I got two movies that are very imperative. We're going to go through that. Not right now, though. Okay, understand John Leguizamo and this story I'm reading. They are mocking God right here. Purely, purely. And I'm going to read it. I have the scripture up. It's crazy because they're saying he denied thrice to be a drug dealer in Carlito's way. <laughs> All right, it, it's ridiculous. They're mocking God. Luke chapter 22, verse 34. Third at the 31st. And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan hath desired to have you that he may sift you as a wheat. But I have prayed for thee that thy faith fell not. And when thou art converted, strengthen thy brethren. And he said unto him, Lord, I'm ready to go with thee both into prison and to death. And he said, I tell thee, Peter, the cock shall not crow this day before that thou shalt thrice deny that thou knowest me. And he said unto them, when I set you without purse and scrip and shoes, lacked ye anything? And they said nothing. Then said he unto them, but now he that hath a purse, let him take it. And likewise his scrip. And he hath, he that hath no sword, let him sell his garment and buy one. For I say unto you that this that is written must yet be accomplished in me, and he was reckoned among the transgressors for the things concerning me have an end. All right. Right there. He's saying three times he denied the roles and he ended up doing it then. Come on now. Peter denied God, Lord, the Lord three times. Then he went and sobbed sorely. He cried because he did exactly what the Lord said. He couldn't believe he even did it. Come on, y'all. This stuff mocks God. Point blank, period. All these stories I read to you is a way of mocking God. John Leguizamo. Matthew chapter 10, verse 33, starting at the 30th. But the very hairs of your head are all numbered. Fear ye not, therefore, ye are of more value than any many sparrows. Whosoever, therefore, shall confess to me, therefore shall confess me before men. Him will I confess also before my Father which is in heaven. But whosoever shall deny me before men, him will I also deny before my father, which is in heaven. Think not that I am come to send peace on the earth. I came not to send peace, but a sword. For I am come to set a man at variance against his father and the daughter against her mother and the daughter-in-law against the mother-in-law. And a man's foes shall be they of his own household. Right there. Thank you, Lord. That is all fact. That is all fact. The devil twirls and pushes people of your household to really push you to limits to try and see what they can get over on, to see what they can say to you, to see how ignorant they could be. But if you stick with Christ, you supersede that. He allows you to overstep that. So these are two of the things that were entered in exactly by typing in what is in this article. I'm telling you, it's all one for one, all of it. All right, let's do it. Second Timothy chapter two, verse 12. I starting at nine. Wherein I suffer trouble as an evildoer, even unto bonds, but the word of God is not bound. Therefore, I endure all things for the elect's sake, that they may also obtain the salvation, which is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory it is a faithful saying. For if we be dead with him, we shall also live with him. If we suffer, we shall also reign with him. If we deny him, he also will deny us if we believe not yet. He abided faithful. He cannot deny himself of these things. Put them in remembrance, charging them before the Lord that they strive not about words to no profit, but to the subverting of the hearers study to shoot myself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth right there. You have to make righteous discernment that Jesus Christ is Lord. It is your choice. If you do not choose this, you are willingly turning your tail on God. You're turning your back. Now, understand Peter did. He told him Peter was going to deny. Peter did deny. But you got to understand the whole story. Peter wept sorely. And we're getting to that thing because it all connects to Revelation. Peter wept sorely. He was very disappointed in himself. Very. And understand when he seen him come back. He had a chance to apologize. We don't have that chance. We are living once as humans. God is God. He came back as he said. He wept before him. 
because he felt like trash because he did exactly what he said and he did not mean to do it but he was scared so he did it out of his human fear but you're not supposed to be fearful when you're with christ and he told them that that's the thing and those were guys who saw his works no think it how much greater than you not seeing his works and you not denying them your blessings will be abundant let's go second timothy chapter 2 13 starting at the 10 therefore i endure all things for the elect's sake that they may obtain the salvation which is in the christ jesus with eternal glory it is a faithful saying for if we be dead with him we shall also live with him if we suffer we shall also reign with him if we deny him he also will deny us if we believe not yet he abideth faithful and he cannot deny himself of these things put them in remembrance charging them before the lord that they strive not about the words to no profit but to the subverting of the hearers study to shew thyself approved unto god a workman that needeth not to be ashamed rightly dividing the word of truth but shun profane and vain babblings for they will increase unto more ungodliness it is all this stuff looking at the stars the sun the moon reading calendars trying to read your future it's babbling all of its astrology, babbling. You're babbling. You're reading it. It's babble of Satan, not of God. God just told you, do not deny me. That means you trust in him. You put him first. You don't think of anything else over God. That's the thing. When people do those things and they trust in that over Christ, you lose everything else. You lose your salvation in Christ. When you leave, don't play with him. Trust in him through all ways. Keep him close in your mind. Pray and trust. People can't, people don't have it. They don't have faith. All they care about is what I can do, what I can do. How can I do this? How, that's not how you live life. That's not. You trust in Jesus Christ and ask him to lead you. And then you make moves. If you're not sincere with it, he ain't sincere with helping you. That's what I'm saying. He knows, he reads the soul, the heart. He knows when you're lying. So you're trying to say something and then, Really, you don't feel that way. He sees it. He's not a man. Proverbs chapter 30, verse 7. Starting at the fourth. Who hath ascended up into heaven or descended? Who hath gathered the wind in his fist? Who hath bound the waters in a garment? Who hath established all the ends of the earth? What is his name and what is his son's name? If thou canst tell. Every word of God is pure. He is a shield unto them that put their trust in him. Add thou not unto his words, lest he reprove thee, and thou be found a liar. Two things have I required of thee. Deny me them not before I die. Remove far from me vanity and lies. Give me neither poverty nor riches. Feed me with food convenient for me, lest I be full and deny thee, and say, Who is the Lord? Or lest I be poor and still, and take the name of my God in vain. Accuse not a servant unto his master, lest he curse thee and thou be found guilty. Yo, if you curse God, you are asking for the worst things to happen to you. You know how people curse God, like God, you blip, blip, blip. Like you curse out a person, you maybe you'll live, you'll be fine, but you're going to get reproval. God's going to deal with that, you know, on my end, on their end. However, you curse God. Wow. People curse God like cursing in their mind. Curse at him in your head. I'm telling you, it gets bad. He reads all. He looks at the heart and the mind. Everything we say in our heads, he hears it. You can't play with God. Job chapter 8, verse 18. Let's get it. It's starting at 15. He shall lean upon his house, but it shall not stand. He shall hold it fast, but it shall not endure. He is green before the sun, and his branch shooteth forth in his garden. His roots are wrapped up about the heat. And see if the place of stones, if he destroy him from his place, then it shall deny him saying, I have not seen thee. Behold, this is the joy of his way. And out of the earth shall others grow. Behold, God will not cast away a perfect man. Neither will he help the evildoers till he fill thy mouth with laughing and thy lips with rejoicing. God, yo, thank you, Lord. Don't matter what people do. God's going to give you a reason to smile and laugh. He's going to give you joy in the midst of Satan trying to cause conflict and people giving Satan place to say, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. God's going to give you a reason to laugh because that's God. You trust in him. He's going to push you to the levels you need to be. We're in a time and place. And I, the story, yo, with the movie things, you're going to see for real. 
A movie 100% shows exactly what's going to happen. And I'm going to use that as a reference for me talking about Revelation as well. Matthew chapter 26, starting at the 31st verse. Then saith Jesus unto them, all ye shall be offended because of me this night. For it is written, I will smite the shepherd and the sheep of the flock shall be scattered abroad. But after I'm risen again, I will go before you unto Galilee. Peter answered and said unto him, thou, though all men shall be offended because of thee, yet will I never be offended. Jesus said unto him, verily I say unto you, thee, that this night before the cock crow, thou shalt deny me thrice. Once again, Peter said unto him, though I should die with thee, yet will I not deny thee. Likewise also said all the disciples, then come of Jesus with them unto a place called Gethsemane and saith unto the disciples, sit ye there while I go and pray yonder. And he took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee and began to be sorrowful and very heavy. These guys were hurt at heart because Jesus was about to go put it all on the line. They loved them. Because he taught them so much and they trusted him. He showed them miracles. So they learned to believe. But he's saying, imagine this guy come along. He's doing miracles, telling you he's God. He shows you outright he's God by doing pure miracles, healing people in front of you. He's got, then you got to leave. You're sad because that person gave you comfort. They lost their comfort. But he says, I will always be with you and we're getting it. Thank you, Lord. He said that. Come on, man. Luke chapter nine, starting at 20th verse, he said unto them, but whom say ye that I am? Peter answering said the Christ of God, and he straightly charged them and commanded them to tell no man that thing, saying the son of man must suffer many things and be rejected of the elders and chief priests and scribes and be slain and be raised the third day. And he said to them, all, if any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it. But whosoever will lose his life for my sake, the same shall save it. For what is a man advantage if he gain the whole world and lose himself or be cast away? For whosoever shall be ashamed of me and of my words of him, all the son of man be ashamed when he shall come in his own glory and in his father's and of the holy angels. He's going to be ashamed of you when he comes to save everybody. That's crazy. Because you were ashamed to declare Jesus Christ as your Lord, he's going to be ashamed of you before God. Everybody's like, God know me. God's going to... No, he's not. You deny Jesus, God's going to be the one himself to throw you in the hell. You're saying God knows me. He's going to reach over, grab you, and just throw you in the hell because you didn't believe. Right there. Right there. Yo, thank you, Lord, right now. Please help these people understand. John Leguizamo, he's been an actor for a long time. Acting in many different movies, many TV series. Okay. He has been successful celebrity status for a long time. He made this comment in the article. And these things, these guys know the Bible. They're saying these things, but they know the Bible. You would think that they're just obscenely to it. It's hard for me to that they don't know the Bible exists. The question is, did they read it? Them saying they didn't read it won't save them. They chose not to read. They made a choice because they chose that. They're going to get the ending of not reading the Bible or accepting the Lord because they chose it. We cannot be aligned with not choosing to do God's will, not choosing to acknowledge Jesus and think God's going to allow sin. No, nope, not at all. Not at all. Matter of fact, he's going to do the opposite. Like I said, he's going to send you an internal torment. You have to declare him. You have to think of him. Trust in him. Believe him. Those are the only ways you can save your soul. The only way. There's no other way around. People want to look for a separate way. No, it's not going to work. Now, I have one instance here of a dealer. OK, remember, his position was a drug dealer that he played. Isaiah chapter 24, verse 16. The only one with a dealer from the uttermost part of the earth. Have we heard songs, even glory to the righteous. But I said, my leanness and leanness my leanness woe unto me the treacherous dealers have dealt treacherously yea the treacherous dealers have dealt very treacherously his positions he played in movies were treacherous he was a deal a drug dealer that's treachery i did that yesterday just talking to you he played treacherous positions 
The question is, did he find Jesus Christ? That's all that matters, guys. That's all that matters. There's nothing else that matters. Not his position, not how many times he denied it, even though he's mocking Peter straight up. I just read it thrice. It's three times. Come on. You know what that means. We know what's going on. This is what it is. Do you accept the Christ, the Messiah that came, put his life on the line and shed his blood on Calvary for you and I? Do you? Right on time.